if they wanted to create a three row version, it could be Aria Grande. Aria, or just Aria Na, because this is Aria. 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 And they could add a na. Aria. Aria na. Na. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to operate the pedals while you steer? Oh, it's so kind of you. It sounded like some sort of a softcore porn uh, videotape. The This American Life had two here on the show. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Charlie from Daily Motor. This week, we're out driving the 2023 Nissan Aria. This is an entirely electric vehicle. It's Nissan's second all-electric model. They made the Leaf before this for quite a long time, and Nissan was actually one of the first people in the game with an actually usable uh, kind of mainstream electric vehicle. So the Aria, in theory, should be a really good second model from this company. I'm curious, right off the bat, oh good, look, no more Chatamo charging. We're actually running with a proper level three charging solution there. Like to see that. This thing looks pretty neat. It's got that kind of compact crossover proportions. Some pretty cool wheels. I There's a lot of different trims of the Aria. And let's see if it says on the back. Yes, this is the Evolve Plus E-Force, meaning it's all-wheel drive. It is rocking the 87 kilowatt hour battery pack, so the larger one. And it should be, it's about like two steps below the top trim. So this one's about $56,000, but when we get inside, we'll take a look at the build sheet. I should also note that this is a pre-production model, so it's possible that some of the things that we notice here from inside behind the wheel might be uh, improved upon when the final car comes out. But I actually, I like this font. I like the, the lettering styling here. That's pretty cool. Power this open. All right. Now Nissan's, uh, I've got kind of a love-hate relationship with them. Some of their cars I really like, some of the cars drive me nuts. So I'm, I'm genuinely curious about this one. Smell test, not fantastic. Looks like we got some underfloor storage though. I see a charger in there, that's good. Oh, that just kinda, kinda comes out. Oh, and you could drop it down. If you were to take this whole section out, it looks like you could, you could actually go lower in there with this. That's kinda cool. Come on, go back in. Well, let's pull this one up first. All right, a little bit more. I see a tire inflation kit there. Get this back on. I like having those side wells to put more things about folding down the seats all right so you can't do that from back here you're gonna have to do that from up front but i do see some tie down points up there some hooks let's leave this open for a quick moment so i can come up here and fold down the seat all right folds right down oh uh, yeah pretty flat load surface power that thing down power's pretty decent speed down very wide opening door here so that's good if you're loading in something like a car seat Ooh, nice feel to the seating material. Very flat load surface. And that is, that's a fun material right there. Some heated seats, USB-A and USB-C. Whoa. That's almost denim feeling. That's kind of cool, like a, like a rubber denim. Huh. All right, flip down armrest. We've got a mostly panoramic sunroof. We'll open that up here in a minute. Some fun driver and passenger headrests. In terms of comfort though, I'm five foot 10. I'm sitting nice and upright. All right, not too bad. Cool. Some fun cross-stitching there, as well as it looks like two different speakers, possibly, unless this is just design. I'll have to look into the specs of the sound system on this one. I'm assuming it has a Bose system, but don't know that for sure until we open up and see. I still don't see any Bose badging. There, maybe? Wow, is this a non-Bose system? I'll have to consult the build sheet. Before we get into the driver's seat, let's pop open the hood and see what we've got under here. Do we have any sort of frunk storage or is it just mechanicals? Just mechanicals. Okay, so no sort of frunk. Fair enough. Kind of got a bit of a Mercedes design going, if I dare say so myself. E-Force. It's got to just let you know that it's all-wheel drive. Brand that baby up. Feels like some Alcantara. Thick suede in the middle. Oh wow, this is a cool interior. Neat. Let's take a look at the key. All right, pretty standard Nissan key. Let's get that in here. Look at that. These controls are like baked into this fake wood here. That's kind of neat. I've never seen a steering wheel with a center ring at the bottom. It's always at the top. Interesting. Here we go, Aria Evolve Plus. Two-tone boulder gray pearl and black diamond pearl. 
Interior is charcoal. Let's say that seems accurate. 389 horsepower from these motors. 87 kilowatt hour battery, mentioned that. This looks like our starting price is about $35,000 after destination. And we don't have, we're only paying $250, or $350 for the two-tone paint. That's pretty good. And then apparently $250 for the floor mats. Some of our standard features with the Evolve Plus. Power lift gate, power panoramic moonroof, LED lights, power seats, garage door opener, that's good. Wireless device charging. Ooh, intelligent rear view mirror. I think, ooh, whoa, that's a very square mirror. <laughs> that really caught me off guard. Hmm, interesting. Um, we've got driver's memory seat, 7.2 onboard charger. That's not super fast, 7.2 kilowatts for level two. <laughs> okay, intelligent cruise control, rear view monitor, and active sound control. All right, let's, let's fire this baby up. This big center pass-through, let's get this in here. Come on. This big center pass-through doesn't do much for me. I thought it would be useful, but then I talked to Alyssa and she said no, because if you put a purse there, take a corner, it's just going to rattle around and go right into your foot well. So that is a good point. Whole thing front and back. That's kind of cool. All right, looks like some stairs really gets going. A little bit more elegant, I suppose, than the Ionic 5 setup. USB-A and USB-C there. Looks like they're both data supporting, so that's cool. Okay, okay. There's your wireless device charger there, tucked away. Not a whole ton of storage, though. You gotta think, you want to have covered storage in a car for security reasons. If you got something like a wallet or a phone or jewelry or something like that, you want to be able to tuck it away. And this doesn't provide you any ability to do that. So you're pretty much limited to here and here. So that's certainly something to consider. What does this do? I guess that's just, uh, let's turn it on. I actually like the shape of the wheel. Oh, volume knob. That's, that's the importance of the volume knob there. Okay, things whirring to life. Oh, that's a good song. Now what can this do, open? Oh, you actually, what? What is that? There's your covered storage, they thought of it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that's actually kind of cool. What? Close. Oh, you gotta hold it though, I don't love that. I, I, that does it for me. That, that type of stuff is cool. Okay, all right. Steering wheel's coming forward. My gray pants kind of match the charcoal interior. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna move this forward a little. A lot of lumbar support on my seat. I'm gonna dial that back a bit. Fun gauges, although I don't really know why you need a bunch of analog looking uh, displays there. Ooh, don't love the manual adjusted steering column. 56,000. Brake pedal's a little squishy, but let's see how that is out on the road. Pop open our camera mirror and away we go. I like the feel of the leather on the steering wheel. That feels nice. Okay. Let me get this baby open. There we are. Oh, no, oh, oh, not all the way. Well, we might as well see how much it opens. I'm going to turn E-step on, which I believe should give us one pedal driving. Let's see, does it come to a stop? Seven, six, no, it does not. Is there a way to do that? Do we need to turn creep on or something like that? Or off? Let's see. Dig into the infotainment here. It seems like a new infotainment system. I like to see that. I like having these climate controls right here too, so I can dial my fan down, it's a little loud. They are haptic, but we'll see how much that annoys me over the week. All right, at this point, we've stopped trying to figure it out ourselves and consult the Google. Uh, yeah, most of what I'm finding is saying no true one pedal driving for the Aria, which is disappointing, because I liked that with the Leaf, and I, I like that with EV cars in general. Let's see, it's not stepping away, uh, but right there, once I give it a little bit of throttle, oh, it's accelerating. Man, why, why would they do that? Very strong regen, though, with E-Step on. Oh, and it is quick. 
not too surprising given the power figure numbers, but getting back into an EV is always a surprise. <laughs> That's fun. Ooh, you know, the seats don't have a lot of bolstering in them. Just that one corner right there sliding around quite a bit. I really, I think I like the steering wheel. That'll be sort of a TBD after this week. I like, oh, that's, okay, that's locked. I like all the physical controls, though. A lot of EVs are resorting to doing everything inside the screen, and it's not always a good thing. Why, why does this menu thing have to be there on the mirror? I, why would I want that? Can I make that go away? Oh, that's so many options. Indication. Off. Hey, there we go. <laughs> A few different drive modes. What are we in right now? Standard, and then there's Sport, Eco, and Snow. Sport mode here. Oh, and let's actually, if we can do it fast enough, take our stability control off as well. VDC. Oh. Ooh, in sport mode, we got some fun throttle noise there. It does not fall off around 60, 70 miles per hour, that's for sure. Oh, I'm sliding everywhere in these seats. Uh, the steering is all over the place. Hmm. And by all over the place, I mean there's a vagueness to it. You don't really feel what you're doing. But I didn't notice that until driving it hard. Our fried section. Good, pretty solid in here, especially for a pre-production vehicle. Let's turn the AC off and get a little uh, zero to 60. Not a super strong initial pull there. But it does keep going. doesn't have that the jumpiness that you might be used to from an EV. A lot of EVs you can flip the throttle and really fool yourself be yanked back and forth, but I'm not getting that so much in this one. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing, it's just interesting observation. squeal from the tires. A lot of warning there. Let's get sport mode off. Standard. Pro Pilot Assist 2 coming in with a decent active lane keeping system if I do remember correctly. Let's see how it handles the blind corner here. Some adaptive cruise control slowing us down behind this truck. And it got lost pretty quick. Get speed back up. Got lanes again. This is something that always bothers me with new Nissans is when you engage the cruise control, it brings up this cruise control screen. Also, it's slowing itself down way too much for this corner. I don't like when cars slow themselves down on the highway. Uh, but anyway, it brings up this cruise control screen and then after the cruise is off, it still just stays on the screen. Man, that, that lack of a one pedal is bothering me and also, the squeakiness of this floor mat. <laughs> a lot to soak in with this new Aria. There are some things I definitely like about it and some things that got me scratching my head a little. So this is definitely gonna require a week of evaluation. Tune in just a moment here to see our thoughts after that time. Aria is like a person's name, Aria. 
Right? Yeah, I guess. Isn't Arya a character in Game of Thrones? Arya? Oh, maybe. I feel like I know somebody called Arya as well. My high school girlfriend Ari. was named Ariane. Ariane. My friend's dog is called Ari. Ari. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wrapping up our week with Ari. Anna. Ariana. Ariana. The Grande. Ariana. If they wanted to create a three-row version, it could be Aria Grande. Aria, or just Aria. Nah, because this is Aria. 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 Add a nah. Ariana. Ariana. Mm -hmm. You know, like how Toyota does the Grand Highlander. This could be the Ariana. Mm -hmm. The Grand Aria. The Grand Aria. What if manufacturers just started doing that to create their bigger cars? It's just Grand. Well, Jeep does it with the Grand Wagon here. Grand Wagon and Grand Cherokee. Grand Cherokee L. Well, yeah, so the, the Grand Cherokee was already the Cherokee, and then it was Grand, so it was larger, and now it's even larger Grand Cherokee L. That's right. Or could you have just done the even grander larger Cherokey. and get the Grand Wagoneer. Right. They should have done the Wagoneer? grandest. Can you get a Wagoneer that isn't a Grand yes. Wagoneer? Yes. It's just less nice. It's not a size It isn't a size though. thing. So, anyways, uh, so this is the electric Nissan. Charlie has spent the week with it. You spent some days I've with it. I've spent two days with it. Yeah. Yeah. It looks better in other colors, in real colors. This gray is a bit more. It looks like a Lexus NX. Mm hmm. Yeah, I actually really like the font on it. Mm, I, of course you do. So th these cars are all going out to the press fleets right now. Mm -hmm. I've seen one in red, looks excellent. One in blue, looks excellent. The gray you're not a big fan of. No. Also, when you say font, do you mean this font, this font, this font, or this font? Because they're all different. Yes. You like all of them? Do you think he likes all of them? Hello! You can probably see this one from up there. That's good. It's angled down, actually. That's though. true, you probably can't. But yeah, no, I, I like all the fonts. I've learned that this is a style car. Um, people who are very into like fashion and styling and I things think like that seem to really. Fashion are going to buy a Mercedes EQB. Yeah, but not every person can afford a Mercedes EQB. How much is an EQB? This is sixty thousand dollars. Is this sixty? No, it's, it's fifty-six. 50. It's fifty-six. Is it? Yes. Oh. And it's not built in America. Right. Uh, no, I just everyone who I've pulled up to. And Alyssa and every, every people, they're all like, wow, this is a really striking, good-looking car. In the interior reflects that as well. Even I, who am not really? a big style person, I got in and was like, wow, this is, this is a pretty cool car. Yeah, I think it just looks like everything else. Really? Yeah. You I don't know, think it looks bad mm -hmm. at all. I don't, I don't think that it's an ugly car. I just think that it's boring. You know what this section of headlight looks like? An Acura NSX. What? Do you see that? Look, look right there. Acura NSXs have pop-up headlights. Oh, you mean a new NSX? Yes, a new NSX. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. See? Yeah, a little bit. It's got the same, like, LED line and then a little er for the... A little er. Yep. Okay. Uh, also, a bird has had its way with the, uh, with the left, left headlight there. Yeah. Shall we drive it? Yeah. Uh, you'll appreciate the rear proxy key. Yes, I'm a big enthusiast of rear proxy key. Charlie, would you like me to operate the pedals while you steer? Oh, it's so kind of you. I don't like getting in and out of this car. Did you notice that at all? Well, no, because the seating position's wrong. Yeah, there's... So when you get into it, you feel like you're going to hit your head. Yeah, I don't know. And like, it's like this bolster's too large, but this one's too small. You like fall <laughs> down into it. I don't, I've never been able to put my finger on it. Also, they managed to make a new infotainment system that still feels old. Yeah, un <laughs> unwieldy. I don't but understand. But I, I quite like this. You know what this feels like? What? This is like a Chinese copy of somebody else's infotainment system. That's a good way to put it. Like, why is it... I, I see the vision. Yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. They have, like, all these different kind of thumbnails here to try and make things look... Modern, but it just looks fake. Also, you notice how stuttery the screen is. Also, the refresh much, rate is very good. Look at the lag good. on this. Yeah, that's what I mean. And now it changes. Yeah. And then this is nothing. Yeah. I don't take. Oh, it was. It was just making its way. It had to go all the way back around. Mm -hmm. Swirl. It goes back into the dash up here, and then comes and back. Then it comes back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the climate control is also often loud. You can't really like get it very quiet. I thought you liked this car. I do. You I'm actually. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm pointing out little uh, little complaints, and it's. That's actually what's made this car kind of difficult for me, because I, like, multiple people have asked me, well, do you like it? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, not, I don't know, because yeah. I, there's, there's a, it does a lot well, but I just wouldn't have one. But it, it's such a good improvement compared to a lot of other Nissan products, but then what it is, it's a lot of very easily fixable things that Nissan has done wrong and that aggravates me. Like, no one pedal driving. Yeah, Why not just make that an option? 
Yeah. Like, why would you have that on your previous cars, but then take it away? And not only that, it does have auto hold. So essentially, if you're driving with E-Step on, it'll slow you down to about seven miles per hour. But if you come to a stop, it'll hold. It'll hold you. Well, not there. There you go. It'll hold you. And then you kind of step away, and then, it, and then it won't hold anymore. It's just like, why couldn't you have that? You know? Why do manufacturers not do that? Is it a safety thing? No. It's laziness. It's lazy. Well, I think it's a bit of laziness, but also, I think that they think that more people would rather have a non-one pedal driving. Yeah, but experience. you can have both. Like, exactly. Right? You you can have both. Well, you it's know, a lawnmower. Yeah, right? you gotta sometimes mow your lawn. Yeah, I. I think it's just, yeah, they think that people would, would rather not have I just, it. I'm, see, I'm all about choices. Yeah, why not? Why not give you choices? Um, I, I, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the, stu- the seating position. Also, things like this. This looks excellent. I love how the Doesn't climate control nice, looks. And yeah. I like having the physical controls. But then you go to, like, rapidly adjust your, your climate, and it doesn't, it feels clunky. Yeah, it doesn't do it right away. And then this whole area... Again, it's a bit wasted space. It's I okay because you can adjust your right your tires. Okay. Thank goodness. Console. Here's the thing: I often, when it, whenever I'm driving somewhere after filming, I want to tuck my camera equipment away. I don't like leaving it out in the open. Oh well, boy, do I have a spot for you? Only for my GoPro. Hat wouldn't fit in there, so I had to take my GoPro off the hat and put it away. I think you can open this though. Yeah. yeah. You think a hat would fit in there? Oh yeah, let's yeah. go quite deep. But do you really want to cram your filming hat in there with like, really. you know, the headphones? I don't even want to cram this blue it, hat. In. Right, exactly. So just a good proper open area, <clears throat> Tesla, would have been preferred. Now go ahead and operate the button to close that, which you have to hold. Yeah. You don't it's want not a, not children's a fingers touch. to get that. But it does go quite quickly. So, oh, yeah. Speaking but only of, when you're already going 40 miles per hour. That is if true. If you're so going zero miles per hour, it's not that fast. I don't understand this about this car because every See? other EV... You get on it, and it's very fast right away, and then it tapers off. This yeah. one's the opposite. It's right. slow right away, and then as you carry speed, it starts accelerating faster. It's actually kind of terrifying. It's like Nissan wants you to break the speed limit. Yeah. They're like, don't worry. You should never be going above low 60 in this car. But I, I can kind of see how that makes sense, because it behaves more like an ICE car. Mm-hmm. Because off the line, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't break your neck. So someone who doesn't have super good throttle control and discipline coming from an ICE car may find this easier to get used to. Sure. But that's the other confusing thing is it's like some of the aspects of this car are like very sporty. Again, like that. Like you yeah. can drive it very fast. Like it's, it, it's hustleable. But yet it's designed and marketed toward a very non-car enthusiast sort of market. Someone who values more like style and and substance and like image yeah. more so than driving experience. So have, there's a lot going on. I have a question as well. Okay. Why is the six o'clock marked? I pointed that out in the intro. It's the first <laughs> steering wheel I've ever seen with the bottom instead of the top. Bit strange. Oh. Also, there's always a slight delay in the throttle. Sorry, yeah, I should have done that in um, sport mode. Loud mode. Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> I don't particularly care for the uh, propulsion sound in this car. Do you not? No, are you turning? Oh, dear. Oh, I'm surprised you managed to do that before the corner. It's not my Four first drift. Drift. Um. No. <laughs> you scared the, the jeebers out of that poor infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Left foot brake time, wind flip flops. In a very heavy vehicle. With not very grippy tires. <laughs> Broken your flip flops back out. Yeah. <laughs> that noise is silly. I also can't decide if the ride is good or not. I think it's what my buddy Mike Sutton, that car and driver, would describe as flinty. Flinty? Yeah, which, if I understand correctly, is good uh, over like the little bumps in the primary ride, but the secondary ride is kind of lost and all over the place. Like it doesn't settle down very easily. Yeah, that's true. Because it does absorb these little bumps. Well, I think it's because it's got some good meaty sidewall, you know? Yeah. Um, can we point out a few things about the sound system? Yeah. Six speaker sound system. Okay. Pretty decent. Yeah, it's not bad. You can only get the bows on the top trim. Yeah, why do they do that? It's because it's to force you to buy the top trim if you care about music. Yeah. It's a bit of a shame. Yeah, it's Honda does the same thing. Mm hmm. Sound systems should just be an uh, option. Uh, on a laptop, and he opens it up. 
Was that something you were listening to? Yes. What is that? I don't know. It's public radio. You wouldn't. You'd know nothing about that. It sounded like some sort of a softcore porn uh, videotape. This American Life at two here on Michigan oh, Radio. No, it, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like one of those audio books. Did you get a thumbnail? No. Would you like to get a thumbnail? Yes. Do you think it'll drift? Let's try. The donuts. Yeah, you did, you didn't do that with Amos? Uh, no. You just turned VDC on. No, I, I had I had it back on. I turned oh, you had it, it back on. That's gonna be a no. Yeah, definitely no. A lot of pushing. Yeah. You know, like enthusiasts, we enjoy oversteer. Yes. That was the opposite of that. Yeah. Yeah, it was very neutral. I, I assume it's two balanced motors, mm-hmm. probably. You know, equal equal power. Fifty fifty power distribution. At least they let you turn VDC off, though. Yeah. What are you going to do for your uh, facial image on this one? Oh, that's a good one. That's fi- that's fitting, actually. All right, let's be nice to the car now, because okay. I actually do quite like it. Are you bummed that they've eliminated the Chad charger? Port? No. I'm happy they did that. No more chad mo uh, It charges quickly, doesn't it? No. Mm. Okay, uh, what's something else we could say about it that might be considered nice? This turned itself back on. Yeah. Um, here's an interesting thing about it. Again, super remediable. These are all, most of these complaints are very just like, Nissan, why'd you do this sort of things. The parking brake doesn't auto set itself when you stop the car. So if you stop it on an incline, it engages some sort of park gear and does the same (laughs) awful clunk thing that a normal transmission car does. Why not just engage the parking brake? (laughs) I noticed that in Emily's driveway. Yeah. Oh. Okay, no, so nice things about the car. I like the way the turn signal feels. I do too. Actually, I like the way pretty much everything feels. Can we get huge accolade for this car? Nearly no piano black. That is true. Only a little bit right here, which will look terrible, but... Well, you know why? Because there's nothing here. That's a good way so to the, get there away from been, the piano. Just don't put any material, and then you'd have no option to, to put piano black. Watch out for these Broncos up here. Now it hit. You know what's Now weird? it's pulling stronger now. 40 miles per hour mm-hmm. is yeah. when it kind of like punches you. Yeah. It's very strange. Bronco jail is this, being refilled. I was going to say, this was empty for a while. Mm-hmm. So they've... The one by my house is filled to the brim. Did Look, they... Bronco jail is so full that they're storing them on the street. Did they stop making Broncos for a second? Is that why this was empty? Perhaps. Or maybe they had a, like a new shipment of chips that they could have moved them all out. Oh, and now true. They're building new They need ones. more colors for the Bronco. Yeah. Well, those uh, the Heritage ones are excellent. That's true. Get, get that nice, like, robin, robin egg blue. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, oh, that was just the color that's on your Maverick, which is a nice color. Area 50. Yeah, but I thought it was something different. I really like the interior design of this car. I do. These cup holders aren't very large, though. And also, who has square cups? Is this for boxed tea. water? No, it's for pure leaf oh, tea. Oh, pure leaf tea and boxed water. Yes. Okay. That's what I would put in it. I like pure leaf tea. I like the leather on the steering wheel. Yeah, it's nice. Although I don't like you the don't like the perforation though, which is where you touch all of the time. Yeah. See, so those you could drive like this. That's a perfect example of how I feel about this car. It's so close to being right. Why do you need this? Oh, no. When are you getting sweaty? You can beat him. You're, oh, you're trying to make the turn, but you have to dramatically cross over. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Anyways. Oh. Uh, did you know that there's all sorts of different cluster designs you can set? Yeah, I noticed that when you gave Amos the car did back it, to and me, I don't know different. how he did it. Uh, he was like messing around with it, and then all of a sudden the cluster looked better, and I said, oh, so I didn't even mess with it anymore. Well, Amos is a I bit of a closet him. Nissan enthusiast. He is. He does. He likes the, um, he's got a Versa this week. Did he like I know, it? Yes. And he likes the Sentra. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he likes the likes, Frontier. And he likes the 400Z, and he likes the GTR. Yeah. And he think he liked the Rogue, too. I think he kind of liked this. And he drove it on the first drive. He did a first drive event. Yeah. Did you talk oh. about the brake pedal at all? Because we should... Wait, can we acknowledge that Jetta first? That, he's getting 50 miles per gallon. Yes, he is. She. She. She is getting 50 miles per gallon. Uh, oh, the brake pedal. You want to talk about that? Yes, because do you remember the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid? Unfortunately. This has the same brake pedal. Yeah. Because it moves. Yeah. It's a, the, the brake pedal's never where you left it. Right. And I don't really appreciate that with something that I need to stop the car. It's mm-hmm. not where it was when I left it. Yeah. And if you all think we're joking, no, the pedal literally, what it does is when you're in east step, it the regen engages and the brake pedal moves for you without your foot touching it. It's kind of like the, how in cruise control the gas pedal moves for you. On, on old some cars. cars. On old cars. Yeah. 
I don't particularly care for that. I also don't particularly care for the wireless device charger being here because your phone gets really hot. Also, it doesn't stay charged. And there's no console. This is just a yes. big waste of what space. What is the purpose of this thing? To put your elbows, I suppose. It doesn't just doesn't do anything. This, yeah, you're right. This is over engineering at its finest. This is a huge amount of wasted space. And again, that's what I'm talking about with this car. It, it gets all of the basics right, but then there's so many things that you're like, that's an annoyance, that's an annoyance, that's an annoyance, and it and it kills the car for me. Because I actually, I really do like this car, but I wouldn't own one. Yeah, I don't mind it either, if you... This person has that's never it. committed a crime, ever. I've committed a crime by putting that body kit on that car. <laughs> um, okay, something positive, come on, think, think. There is a place to put your sunglasses. Oh, good. Did you notice that when you're opening or closing the sun, the sunroof shade here, you have to do it twice? Yes. It won't just do it. Yes, because I, when I filmed my night drive, I thought, oh, yes, I'm opening the... And then I actually got back in the car and I looked up and I thought, oh, I thought I opened that. So then I had to hit it again. Yep. What do you think about the rectangular mirror? I don't mind it. It threw me off, but I, I don't mind it either. I don't mind it. It's kind of like... Yeah. Well, it distracts you from noticing that Nissan couldn't have been bothered to develop a screen that actually has no bezels. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where to park this. We're going to put it right here. It, oh, here's a great nice thing to say about it. Remarkably efficient. 270 it? miles on the highway fuel economy test. Oh, really? It's qu that's quite good for an EV at 70. Its EPA was 270. Wow. On the highway, not That's mixed nice. driving. But so yeah. this met EPA. Met EPA. The other car we're driving this week beat EPA by 7 mpg. Wow. They got 43 miles per gallon. Wow. That's really good. Yeah. So yeah. I think I'd have that. And yeah. how much is how much does this cost? 56. So the and the car is $20,000 cheaper than this mm -hmm. and it's still a hatchback and it's the same color. Did you end up putting premium or regular in for premium. the premium? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what uh, what they require. No, it's what they require. Recommend. It recommend. says 87. Oh, does required. it really? I, don't, yeah. I didn't read close enough. Yeah. Well, anyway. I, well, you know what? EPA tested it on premium and I usually like that, to that's test good. whatever that's EPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry, we're getting distracted. Uh, did you put this in here? What is it? A little flower. Uh, I, I think the wind probably put that in here. It's trying to pollinate the aria. I see. Um, I actually didn't notice. There's a spot down here for your phone. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, but it's not very convenient. Well, that would. Well, here, let's try and. Oh. Yeah, no. no that doesn't work. One thing that's kind of nice is it doesn't shut itself off immediately when you get out of it. Do it again. It's like a BMW. Double pull doors. Yeah. So this is a pre-production, and I didn't really notice too many like build quality issues. No, I think it was built pretty nice. No, it's, it seems pretty like stout, pretty pretty well put together. So it should mean that the production cars will be even better. Here's another example of that like so close but head scratcher. No frunk. Yeah, Amos and I were discussing the whole frunk situation, and I under I, I agree that it should have a frunk. Mm -hmm. In a car like this, it's not as important because, no. like, you usually use frunks in cars like a McLaren or a Porsche or something that has limited interior space. Yeah. But I do appreciate having a frunk to kind of put things that you don't have to think about. Right. You can kind of just store things and then use your rear space for things that you're getting in and out of quite often. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, I guess I I'm okay with. Mm, Getting more battery, more space for battery, and not having a front. It's the mo the motor is like. A yeah, yeah, because yeah. there's a motor up there and everything. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, in the Tesla Model Y or the or the Mustang Mach E, you get a whole extra area to put things. Then. You know. What else were we driving recently? I had a large frunk. I feel like we were driving something. Some sort of Porsche. Oh, it was my Porsche that I was driving. Had a had a big frunk. I was like, I know I was, I saw a frunk the other day. I don't remember what it was. It was right. my car. Well, if you are cross-shopping a Porsche Cayman S or the Nissan Aria, uh, we might push you toward the Cayman, but there are lots of reasons why the Aria is quite good as well. So thank you all so much for watching. We are Paris and Nicole with Daily Motor, and as always, plastic wheel covers on. Are these plastic wheel covers? Mm -hmm. This would be a very Paris and Nicole car if it was gold, because you can have this in gold, can't you? Probably. I think it's like, you know, like the, that Lexus uh, Copper Crest color? Oh, I think it's yeah. similar. It's similar, like gold, like yeah. um, rose gold. Yeah. Maybe that. not. I, I, I could be wrong. Could uh, be wrong on. Mm -hmm.